so um, I want to talk to you just really quickly about um, the use of mobility data um, for disaster response. Um, this is a field of work that started at Direct Relief um, in 2017 in December. You may remember in Santa Barbara, the Thomas fire, uh, which was at the time the largest uh, fire to hit California since superseded many times by other fires. Um, and uh, Direct Relief in part because of our local uh, role was uh, playing a fairly outsized uh, role in distributing N95 particulate masks to help protect people from wildfire smoke. Um, and it occurred to me that uh, we knew actually very little about uh, how people behave during disasters. We knew very little about uh, where they move, uh, how fast they move, whether uh, people follow evacuation orders or, or uh, um, don't follow evacuation orders, whether uh, that, that is different based upon voluntary versus mandatory orders, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, I was able to work with Facebook at the time uh, to uh, acquire data about aggregated user locations um, in uh, fairly fine-grained areas uh, to look at changes in population density um, over the course of the uh, of the fire. So uh, you're looking at um, that heat map, which is a representation of one of the mornings of the Thomas fire, uh, where there had been uh, movement away from areas in Carpinteria and Ventura, and uh, elevated population in Santa Barbara that of course shifted as, as the change in the fire occurred. Um, and this led into uh, thinking that now uh, virtually every problem that we respond to a direct relief um, has to understand real-time dynamics and population change. So um, mobility data in disasters is, is passively collected, which poses all kinds of, of interesting, uh, both operational and ethical and legal challenges. Um, it's passively collected by social media platforms, by advertising technology. Uh, when you use your cell phone, it uh, pings an advertising company, which then tracks GPS traces and packages those to be able to share uh, with researchers and with nonprofits uh, and, uh, and resells it actually for commercial purposes. Um, this is aggregated in space and time. So uh, basically it's looking at, at chunks of, of uh, movement of uh, groups. So it has um, particular affordances around how we understand changes in groups. Um, in order, there's been a significant move recently towards applying differential privacy, which is a, a mathematical process to uh, allow for um, uh, release of data uh, on that has individuals within it uh, without re revealing uh, identity, without being able to back calculate it. Um, this has led towards a lot of uh, this data now being available on the United Nations humanitarian data exchange platforms, uh, particularly um, the data, some of the data provided by Facebook. And some of the key use cases that we're looking at um, here are around evacuation um, and displacement analysis, resource allocation, like I mentioned for N95 masks, um, disease modeling, um, and uh, which has been a really significant effort during COVID-19 um, and, and other kind of emergency use cases. Just really quick, the predominant use for us is Facebook data for good. Uh, that heat map is aggregated at 600 meter square grid cells and eight hour time increments um, with low counts being removed to protect privacy. Um, this is also a number of other things. Many other data sets are calculated through this. Uh, one around long-term displacement, um, which is calculating the probability that someone has been away from their home overnight um, over a uh, calculated two weeks post-disaster. Um, so it looks at the likelihood that you're not actually returning to your home, uh, which is important for understanding shelter needs and, and other kinds of key questions. And then um, this has been disaggregated by gender, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then, of course, co-location, which looks at probability that two people that are from different parts of an area are spending time within the same area, uh, which is useful for disease modeling. And we've used for calculating things like contact rates within SEIR models and uh, social network proximity, which is looking at, say, the likelihood that two people are connected on a social network from different places, um, even if they aren't interacting in physical space. Can you go to the next slide? So just one of the interesting things that I think we've learned recently that I actually just wouldn't have seen before looking at this uh, kind of data, this is looking at Hurricane Laura 
um, from uh, which hit Louisiana. This looks at the rate at which women and men were displaced from Hurricane Laura. And you can see that there's a dramatic difference in, uh, in women being displaced uh, relative to men from uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana, Calcasieu Parish. Um, and this is true even when normalized population and uh, differences uh, also exist in terms of the probability of men uh, being displaced abroad as opposed to being displaced in nearby areas. And this is uh, significant for looking at healthcare targeting and, and particularly focusing on women's healthcare uh, post-disaster. Uh, 